Pussy Riot are essentially media performance artists who stage guerrilla performances, film themselves doing it, and then post their work of art as video. The idea is that each of these videos, each of these stunts are supposed to provoke debate in society. Well, I've always been interested in stories where art and politics meet. This it was like the perfect storm of, of these two things, using artistic expression to make very big political points. The three women who were on trial really were turning their trial into a piece of performance art. In Russia, the judicial system really is very draconian and sort of backwards and owes a lot to Soviet era. This will be remembered for, for many, many years to come as a very brave and significant act. She came to us in all of her mother's doubt and leaves in mystery. Love, Marilyn is based on two boxes of documents that were found over five decades after Marilyn's death. A lot of them talk about her feelings about being an actress, about her stage fright, about her loves. Ah, oh, life, they have cheated you. We used a wonderful cast of actors to read the documents. We rehearsed my first big scene. I thought that there was something that we could learn by contemporary actresses' interpretations of Marilyn. Remember, you can sit on top of the world. She was always very anxious. She was not going to be perfect or not going to be taken seriously. And in the writings, you can see her kind of talking to herself through that. She haunts us with questions that can never be answered. The winner of the title of Little Miss You Can Do It. What touched me the most, the joy was so pure and so infectious on every single one of their faces, I wanted to be a part of it. I was driven to do pageants because it's something different maybe for a girl with a physical disability. The remarkable thing about Abby is that she developed the Miss You Can Do pageant four years before she ever won anything. Strike a pose, girl. Oh, yeah. That shows her character and why she's impacted these kids so much. I was feeling like I was a princess. Most parents will sit and, and watch this movie and will imagine, how would I react? They're going to try to feel that for themselves. Even talking about it kind of brings back some stuff, emotions. She knows she's a little different. We just want everybody else to treat her equal. When you see someone that's different, don't dismiss them. Look them in the eye and connect, because underneath, whatever their disability is, they're just like you and me, and they just want connection. You want to take my liberty, you got to do it right. I met these young public defenders, and I was just blown away by what they do. If we lose, it's day for day, at least 10 years. One of the most shocking things to me was how many people these young people are representing. Plea was a possibility, but that's not going to happen. The access to the courtroom was really important. Yep. I feel like that was really important to show people what actually happens in a courtroom and to show what a difference good lawyering can make in a person's life. Reasonable doubt. There are clearly huge problems for public defenders including high case loads, long hours, low pay. I'm getting $3 in gas, and hopefully that will take me home. I don't see how you can do this work for any period of time and not begin to love it. I hope everyone will look at these young lawyers and think about what we want our criminal justice system to be. All rise. Versus what it actually is. God. Gaslight is about the contamination of water and the contamination of air and the health crisis. We're living in a cesspool out here. The second film examines another layer of contamination due to fracking, which is the contamination of the democracy. I'm saying that corporations have extraordinary influence in Washington. The great worry is that we're injecting carcinogenic chemicals into the ground that are going to migrate into water supplies. We're all sick and they found it in our blood and in our organs. We wanted to track what our government's response was to the crisis, and we found things that were really shocking.
there's definitely a lot of danger in it. You get rewarded by the judge by the higher you go. Well, the film is called The Crash Reel, about an amazing snowboarder called Kevin Pierce, who was locked in an incredible rivalry with another snowboarder, Sean White, in the build-up to the Vancouver Olympics. This is the incredibly high thrills world of snowboarding where they're coming up a 22 feet wall and then doing flips in the air and then landing. It's mesmerizing to watch. I mean, you cannot rip your eyeballs away. Kevin had this life-changing, life-threatening crash. And then his incredible family comes to the rescue, including his brother, David, who has Down syndrome. You don't know what's gonna happen next. This is a, as it unfolds, seat of your pants. What is he gonna do now? And it's very, very vivid. Tonight's top story, a mother and her two daughters are dead. Their father severely injured after a home invasion stunned the town of Cheshire. Well, the Cheshire murders is about a notorious home invasion that took place in 2007 in Connecticut, where a doctor's family was killed. And the Cheshire Murders was a series of nested tragedies. It wasn't just this horrible night. All these events led up to it. It was quite easy to look at it as a case of good versus evil. But our goal was to really get behind these simple concepts of good versus evil and show the human dimension. We were lucky to establish trust with a lot of people who were shaken to the core. They've refused to speak publicly, so when, when this film airs, this will be their first time being heard anywhere. If closure brings forgetting, I don't want that closure. There are human dramas behind what seem to be open and shut cases. And I hope that it can help people see crime in a different light. It's certainly not for lack of trying that I find myself still single at 41. The story of women in my generation who are having concerns or issues about their biological clocks and not finding partners is very common. So when I found myself in the center of that, actually considering having a baby on my own, I felt like it's an important story and I should make this film, even though I knew it was going to be really difficult. There's someone in there. Also, it's just about showing an alternative family situation. And in a way, it relates to all of us. It starts in that place about a single mother, but it goes somewhere else that everyone can relate to. In the old studio days, casting was very different. Studios had actors under contract, so they used their own players. Marion Darty raised the stock of casting directors in the film business. The casting director is incredibly important in the creative process of filmmaking, without whom we wouldn't have a lot of the legends that we know today. I just feel somebody is right for a part. It's a provocative and unique angle on Hollywood that you've never seen before. I'm really, really interested in people's relationships and what love is about and how people's relationships work. If you find time to do it when the dog's not scratching and the kid's not diving <laughs> on it, it's great. I wanted to put them in bed because I think that the bedroom is a really intimate space and that they could talk much more intimately. I feel like I've met my soulmate, the person that completes me. We're all people that fall in love, fall out of love, have relationships, and your sexual orientation, your age, nationality, none of those things matter in the slightest bit. So it makes me feel young. Mm. Mm.